Good morning, children. Today, we are going to be reading a Magic School Bus book called Plants, Seeds. This is a story about how living things grow. Before we begin, we're going to talk a little bit about the vocabulary used in this book. This book is about how flowers grow from a seed into a flower. This is a picture of a flower. Do you know any parts of the flower already? Maybe you can identify that this flower has petals. Petals are around the inside of the flower. Did you know that flowers have both male and female parts that help them reproduce? The male part of a flower is called the stamen. It consists of several parts that we'll talk about later. You can see that the stamens are in pink on this picture. The female part of the flower is called a pistil. It has several parts, which we'll talk about later. And the pistil is colored in pink on this picture. In the pistil, or the female part of the flower, you can find the stigma. The stigma are colored in pink. This is the moist top part of the pistil, or the female part of the plant, which receives the pollen. The pistil also has an ovary. The ovary is colored in pink. The ovary is a rounded receptacle at the base of the pistil, which contains the ovules. The male part of the plant also has several parts. One part is the anther, which sounds like antler, but it's called the anther. This part of the flower is where pollen is made and stored. Pollen, which is stored in the male part of the plant, are tiny grains or a single male plant cell. I'm going to read you a little bit of the science behind the book now. A seed is a tiny plant in a wonderfully efficient package, ready to grow when the conditions are right. This book tells the story of seeds and the flowers that make them. Pollen is manufactured by the anther, the top part of a flower's stamen. This is the male part of the plant. The colors, markings, and scents of flowers attract animals such as bees and hummingbirds, which drink the flower's nectar and carry its pollen to other flowers. Pollen may also travel on the wind, as with grasses in many trees, or water, as with water weed. When pollen lands on the stigma of its own kind of flower, it grows a pollen tube that reaches down the pistil to the ovary, the female part of the flower. A sperm cell from the pollen travels down the tube and joins with an egg cell. The fertilized egg cell begins to divide and becomes a seed. This is how plants grow. Seeds travel in many ways, on the wind, by attaching themselves to animals or to people's clothing, in the digestive tracts of animals, or by bursting or by bursting forcefully from a pot or fruit. Can you think of any other ways that seeds might travel? Children can enjoy their own plant adventure by looking for these parts on different kinds of flowers and by planting seeds for themselves. Miss Bristle. Now, we're going to read the story. The Magic School Bus, Plants, Seeds, a book about how living things grow. Every class probably learns about plants and seeds, but not every class has Mrs. Frizzle for a teacher. When Miss Frizzle does something, she goes all the way. She started by letting us plant a whole garden behind our school, just like at Middle Creek. A photographer was coming to take a picture of our garden, so we all wanted it to look its best. To think that these beautiful tomato plants started from tiny seeds, Carlos said. 
Add some soil, sunshine, water, and some tender, loving care, and you've got this great garden. And once that photographer takes our picture, we'll be famous, Carlos said. We could be on the cover of Plant It magazine. Would you like me to autograph your seed packet, Dorothy Ann? I'll think about it, said Dorothy Ann. Phoebe was not as excited as Carlos. I wish I had the beautiful plant I raised at my old school. Tim put the finishing touch on a drawing. Phoebe smiled. That's it. Thank you, Tim, she said. Still, I wish I had the real thing for our picture this afternoon. Miss Frizzle spotted the drawing. Your plant looks lovely, Phoebe, she said. Not to worry. It's a simple matter to stop by your old school on a little field trip. Children, what kind of field trip do you think they're going on? We all piled onto the whole school bus. Carlos was worried that we might not get back in time for the photographer. This could take all day. Couldn't we fly or something, Miss Frizzle? Excellent idea, Carlos, she said. Suddenly, the whole bus began to spin. It rose in the air as if it had wings. It did have wings. We were riding in a ladybug. Now, why do you think, children, that the bus turned into a ladybug if they were going on a field trip to visit a plant? As we flew over the buildings and trees, Phoebe began to look nervous. What if Mr. Seedplot sees us, she asked. We never turned into ladybugs when he was my teacher. Just then, we all saw a school below. Phoebe stared. There it is, she gasped. The bus swooped in low through the school's garden. It looked like a jungle. Here's the perfect launching pad. I mean, pedal, said Miss Frizzle. The bus landed with a bounce and crawled along the petal of a huge flower. We crawled one step too far. Suddenly, our ladybug bus slid into something wet and slippery. We're stuck in some goop, Ralphie yelled. It's called nectar, Dorothy Ann said. Follow me, class, said the frizz. She opened the doors and slipped out into the lake of nectar. Boys and girls, why do you think that flowers would have sugary, sweet nectar inside of them? We didn't know it then, but Mr. Seaplot could have reached out and picked us. Phoebe's plants certainly have grown well, he said to himself. She worked hard on them. I really should take one to her new school for her. Mr. Seedplot heard a buzz and looked up. Ah, bees. I won't disturb their work right now, he said, turning to a patch of tomato plants. We also saw the bees coming, and they were headed right into our flower. Yikes! Air raid, shouted Arnold. Glory be, said the frizz happily. As soon as these bees drink enough nectar, then we can crawl out of here. All aboard the lady bus, please. Next stop, Anther. Do you remember what an Anther is? Dorothy Ann is amazing. Even upside down, she could remember what she had read that morning. The Anther is the part of the flower that makes the pollen, she said. Is the Anther a male or a female part of a flower? What do you think? There we were on top of the anther with bees buzzing all around us. It was then that Phoebe caught sight of her old teacher. It's Mr. Seedplot, she yelled. He'll see us. Do something fast. Miss Frizzle stayed calm. No problem, she said cheerfully. We'll get out of here the same way the pollen does. Do you know how pollen gets out of a flower? Let's read on to find out. Miss Frizzle pressed a yellow button and we shrank again. Now we were as small as a grain of pollen. Whew, said Phoebe, that was close. Carlos was not so happy. We'll never get back to school in time for the photographer, he grumbled. B 
be of good cheer. We're on our way, said Miss Frizzle. Hang on, she called as the leg of a passing bee swept up, up and away. Off we flew, stuck to the leg of that bee. It was a short ride. At the very next plant, the bee bumped a flower and brushed us off, along with a lot of pollen. Here we are, Miss Frizzle announced. Where? Phoebe asked. Tim showed her his picture. I think we're on this center part. The stigma, Tim said. Boys and girls, do you remember what a stigma is? The bee had dropped a lot of pollen here. With a big sneeze, Arnold bumped into a grain of pollen, knocked it over, and fell down some kind of tunnel underneath. Phoebe looked down the tube. Mr. Seedplot will never spot us down there, she said, and she hopped into the tube and slid on down. Miss Frizzle beamed. That's the spirit. Take chances. Make mistakes. Check out pollen tubes. Yahoo! She yelled as she, too, jumped down the tube. We all slid to the bottom of the pollen tube. Now where are we? asked Carlos. Couldn't we just grab one of Phoebe's plants and go back to school? I don't think we need a whole plant, Keisha said. Look at this. She pointed to something that looked like a big rock. It's a seed. I get it, Dorothy Ann said. When pollen from one flower lands on the stigma of another, it grows a pollen tube, finds one of these egg cells, and to Together they make a seed. Carlos still wasn't happy. No seed can grow into a plant by three o'clock, he said. Not without some help, said Miss Frizzle. She reached into the bus and pressed a button, and suddenly things went wild. The seeds were growing bigger and starting to sprout hair. We need to hurry things along a bit, said Miss Frizzle. Everyone on the bus, please. We all rushed back to the bus. The door slammed shut, and we drove up and onto one of the biggest seeds. As the seeds around us grew bigger, the flower burst open. We felt the sun shine in and a breeze blowing through the windows of the bus. Suddenly, our seed flew into the air with us on board. So what's carrying the seed? Excellent. Away we flew on the back of our seed, carried along on gusts of wind. Carlos still worried. Can't we go any faster, he asked. There are seeds that travel by attaching themselves to dogs or birds or people, she said, eyeing a man on a bicycle. No, croaked Phoebe. That's Mr. Seed Plot. But she was too late. Our seed had landed in Mr. Seed Plot's hair. Oh, how embarrassing, Phoebe groaned. We were almost home, still stuck in Mr. Seedplot's hair, and he, we hadn't even been introduced. So we all shouted, hello, Mr. Seedplot, except for Phoebe, who was too embarrassed to talk. And when Mr. Seedplot swung his head to see who was calling, we flew off. Last stop, Miss Frizzle announced. She pushed a button. Poof! The bus got big again. She pushed another button. Poof! The seed, which had landed in our garden, grew into a tall plant with beautiful flowers. Ah, there you are, Mr. Seedplot said when he spotted us. I brought one of Phoebe's plants, but I see she already has one. Nice to see you again, Miss Frizzle. Phoebe gasped. You mean you've met Miss Frizzle before? Mr. Seedplot smiled. Yes, she's a very special person. The end. Boys and girls, do you think this story could happen in real life? Why or why not?